welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the Haunted Attraction Hunter Team and Community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. Mm-hmm. And this week, it's the week of nines. <laughs> because we have nine ways that haunts break immersion. It's episode 399. Yeah. So, basically, it's like all nines or the, or, or or, the square root of nine. Oh, yes. Multiples of three, right? Yeah, it could do multiples of three, but, you know, I, 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 math was never my strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> it's stronger than mine. <laughs> so anyway. if you want to see how much math we don't do, <laughs> feel free to check us out at all the places we exist. We're at hauntweekly.com, hauntweekly on Twitter, hauntweekly on Facebook, and youtube.com slash hauntweekly, as well as wherever you get your podcasts, we're there. And we are very, very happy to be there and very happy that you are joining us this week as we are getting ready for the penultimate episode before episode 400. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, first thing is first. How, what haunt work did we do this weekend, Crystal? Because <laughs> I have no fucking clue. <laughs> I know. There was one night. That the feels like got below 90. <laughs> so I did 45 minutes of work and did uh, tore out one of the bathroom stalls. Yeah. And, and began tearing out the other one. Yeah. Got a lot of bracing down from everywhere. So now it's actively dangerous construction zone <laughs> until, you know, it's completely down. Yes. Well, that, that's good news. Um, we're hoping <laughs> to have demo done by mid-August so we yeah. can start putting up new walls. And it was a uh, a difficult weekend for me. We'll mm-hmm. say I, you know, we're going to talk about some stuff in a minute. But yeah, basically, uh, you did that mm-hmm. while I was asleep because that was the only time that was um yeah physically was, possible. Yeah, it was after midnight. It was like no, it was more than after midnight. It was mm-hmm. like after one a.m. Yeah, something like that. But anyways. So, yeah, we are making some progress. More specifically, Crystal is making some progress. But we're hoping that we'll have much more to show and tell very soon. We just, this this heat wave, even by New Orleans standards, yeah, has been incredibly nuts. It's weird, because it doesn't get cool in the evenings. Like, normally, it rains in the afternoon, mm-hmm. and it's been doing that. But then it's going straight back up into the upper 90s, lower 100s. Yeah, and, and the feels like temps, it's been very common for these pa- this past month almost. Yeah. For the feels like temps to never get below 95. Yeah. I think there have been days where the feels like didn't get below even 100 degrees, even in the dead of night. Exactly. It's nuts. And, it and okay, the, the heat is like, like you go to the desert. Mm-hmm. You go to the desert, like it gets cold at night or it's cool at night at least. Yeah. And that's typical. It's never really done that in New Orleans. No. But typically there's been some hours, like it used to be, I remember uh, back when I was running a lot more, mm-hmm. even during summer, there were times in which I could get up early enough and go mm-hmm. complete a 5K and not die. Yeah. <laughs> not th- Not now. There's no. no time of day where that is possible. No, the coolest time recently, as far as I've been looking, has been like 3 and 4 a.m. And even then, not cold. So it's been no, super No, not cold. Not below 80. <clears throat> not reasonably cool. Not safe to even do a lot of work cool. No. That's why I'm bringing it apart into like little projects, trying to get at least one little project done a week, and yeah. then... I keep moving, then it continues to move forward and progress. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that with some medical stuff for me in the rearview mirror for a bit. I hope so. I yeah. hope so that I'll be able to do more. I'll be able to chip in more. And and, and the thing is, like, we're still at a point, even though it feels, we're 100 days out now from Halloween. Yeah, I know. what people keep reminding us. Or, <laughs> thanks. And, yeah, thanks, assholes. <laughs> dicks um but no the thing about it though is like we're still at a time frame where consistent little amounts of work right will add up and make a huge difference exactly so that's what we're hoping to achieve 
Okay. With that out of the way, every week we ask a question of the audience. Last week we were talking about ways to get cheap things. So our question last week was, what was your best dumpster dive, garage sale, or other budget find? Mm -hmm. And some of y'all got really lucky, and some of y'all got some weird shit. <laughs> yeah, speaking of weird shit, Kevin Hopkins said, Ficus Trees was able to build a swamp scene in Detail to Haunt for less than 100 bucks. Now, I had to look up Ficus Trees, because I know jack shit about plants. Okay. I had to look these up. Um, on the site I found, they were selling for between like $40 and $160 a piece. Yeah. And they're the little uh, potted plants you keep indoors, basically. Yeah. They're meant to be indoors. I've never bought these before in my life. No. We have a fake one downstairs. I think we inherited it, though. I think we got it somehow. Yeah, from your grandpa. <laughs> yeah. So I... I, I don't know any of my ficus trees, but I can definitely say that if you've got enough of those to do a swamp scene and other detail on, you got a good deal. Yep. Max Schick, and probably the weirdest find on this list, got a 50-gallon drum filled with deer bones for $20. Yeah. I and my question is, did you get to keep the drum, too? It wasn't clear in the comment, but... That is a good question, yeah. Because then you get, like, a loud thing to bang against. Mm -hmm. And you get a, a shit ton of deer bones. Yeah. Uh, but no, that, so that, that is an interesting find, and I have questions that I am not going to ask, because I'm scared they might be answered. Huh. I should probably reach out to my uh, family that lives in the middle of the country and has deer hookups and see if they can get me some deer bones. Oh, uh, no, dear. <laughs> exactly. And Victor Ruella says, a vacuum former for 200 that's an incredible price for that. Uh, uses it to make torsos and some props, soon moving to wall panels. I want to say of all the things that we got, uh, in terms of amount of money saved, that's probably the winner. Yeah. And not just because a vacuum former is much more than that, but also mm -hmm. because go roam around the trade show floor at Transworld or at Hong Kong or mm -hmm. any of these conventions and see how much these types of props go for. You know, that $200 will pay for itself with, like, two props made. Minimum. You know, maximum. Yeah. It, it is absolutely insane how much money it's going to save. And that's the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, yeah. That, if, as long as you, as long as it doesn't break and as long as you keep loving it, you've got years and years of happy haunting with that vacuum former, and I'm fucking jealous. Yeah. We may, I may put that into my marketplace lookups. Now, some of y'all might have noticed... <laughs> We are coming upon episode 400. Yes. Uh, we have not planned anything for it. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> we're not very good at that kind of planning. Well, we're not very good at that kind of thing, but also we've had a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. And unfortunately, we haven't talked about much of it because it hasn't been haunt related and we try to keep ourselves on topic here. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, basically we have been overwhelmed in just about every capacity. Yeah. Human beings can be overwhelmed. Uh -huh. And trying to, and like, just trying to fit haunt work in between the heat and trying to fit it in time wise. Yeah. And energy wise. Now, one thing about me is that building things and doing demo and stuff like that is very, um, therapeutic. Therapeutic for me. Yes. So that actually makes me feel better. Yeah. <laughs> but with the heat wave yeah. combined with energy and other issues that have been cropping up. God. It's been very difficult. So we've been yeah. struggling to, to get that. And you might have noticed a lot of the topics we've been doing lately are things that while we're passionate about and things we've been talking about organically in almost every case. Mm -hmm. Because, like, this topic also came up on its own between yeah. us, completely separate from Hunt Weekly. That's one of the reasons we opted to do it. Um, but we've been focusing on topics we can pull together fairly quickly because we haven't had the time, the mental energy, or the spoons to get the guests and to do things yeah. the average we need to do. And we definitely want to get back into that. But like I said, it's just we've been completely overwhelmed. Um, there's so much going on. Uh, so here's what we're thinking for episode 400. Mm -hmm. One is we're going to do a regular news episode. Yes. There has already been a fair amount of news out there. Right. Um, so we actually have a lot to cover. There's a lot in our chat about this. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty much ready to go on that front. But we're thinking either that weekend or Monday or Tuesday, yeah. something like that. We haven't quite nailed down the date. We're going to do a live stream. We're going to set up in the store yeah. to do a live stream. We will bring drinks. You can come toast us. 
Um, um, but the first thing we want is we know a lot of you may not be able to be there. So we want your questions for this. What are some things yes. you want us to opine about mm-hmm. while we're doing this? So, And that's why if nobody shows up, we can just answer questions to each other. Exactly. And that'll be fine, too. So please take a minute. Let us know what questions you have for us. This is an AMA situation. And as much as, yeah. you know, as much as we can answer any questions on things, we will answer them. Let us know, hauntweekly.com, hauntweekly on Twitter, hauntweekly on Facebook, and youtube.com slash hauntweekly. And look for, on the Facebook Haunt Weekly yep. for information about when this is going to happen. Yeah, we're probably going to announce it sometime like Wednesday or Thursday. Probably Thursday after the question of the week. Yeah, the question week usually goes out Wednesday. We'll yep. probably announce it Thursday. And that way, everyone can have a little bit of time to prepare. Yep. I'm excited about this. I do love doing the live chats. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, with, and one of the issues we've had, like I said, is that we've been really busy with the store, which is where we have to host these now, yeah. because it turns out our haunt is now a demo zone. <laughs> a little bit. So we're probably not hosting the live chat there. Yeah. Um, well, that and it's outside in the garage in the heat that we've been like bitching about for weeks. Yeah, but just to give like a minor taste yeah. of what I mean by we got way too much shit going on. We showed up to the store on Wednesday yeah. for our regular weekly craft chat. Yes. The first day of my three uh, five, five days day week off. Yes, yeah. five days off. And the day before, I had to go in for a medical procedure. The day after. Thursday. No, this, we, Wednesday was the day before I went in. Yes. Yes. The way the day before your yeah. procedure. That's what I'm yes. saying. Yeah. We go into the store, and it's flooded. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, very little, if any, damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the stock was already off the floor. But we got to run around with vacuums and mops for an hour and a half or so and try to get the store back in place. And then spend two days of our time off trying to sort the shit out what happened. Yeah. And we still don't actually know. No. So maybe we'll be flooded again in about six months. That seems to be how long it takes. Or maybe we won't. Who knows? You know, we have suspicions, but nothing we can confirm. Mm. And we've now had plumbers and AC people out there. Mm-hmm. We don't know what the fuck's going on, but that's just a taste. That's a little flavor of yeah. the craziness going on right now is cleaning out a yarn store Wednesday evening with yes whatever the hell we could find. And if you do play with yarn, I am about to make a new color that haunters will like. So. Yes, and we may actually be launching a site specifically for your dyed yarn too. Yeah, and a lot of it, and, and a lot of her yarn. Hey, it's called Chris's Coffin yarn. Yeah, I mean because it literally dries in a coffin. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But a lot of her yarn does educate her to haunters and people that do haunt stuff. We haven't been talking, but once again, this is another thing that's been so busy. <laughs> we haven't talked about because it hasn't been directly relevant. Well, let's see. You know, yeah. There's that. There's my work, which is. Absolutely yeah. insane, and I am currently looking for new employment. At and least all of our jobs have been insane for different reasons. Yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, it's been rough. It's been a real rough time. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, we're finding some stability. We hope, at least in some yeah. of the areas. Hope so. But anyways. Let's move on to this week's topic, because I'm actually really excited about this week's topic. Yeah, and this is happier stuff. Yeah, even though it doesn't sound happy, I I, I hope it is happier. Because today's episode is nine ways that haunts break immersion. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to say something that's very, very pro-haunt that I think might be too far for even some haunters. Okay. But I believe that haunting, haunted house, haunted attractions, can be, and maybe even should be, the most immersive form of entertainment possible. I agree with that. Because here's the thing. When you're in a haunted attraction, 360 fucking degrees, no matter where you look, you're in a haunted house. Yeah. You, you literally can't look away. It's not like in a movie theater where you can look away from the movie and mm-hmm. look at your phone. It's not like while well, playing a video game where you can get up and go pee and get you know a drink or something while your girlfriend's taking care of the bugs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know... The only thing that is remotely, I think, in the ballpark on that front is VR. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this. I actually do enjoy VR. I've got my Oculus behind me. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it it is not as immersive as a haunted house. A, because you've got two pounds of plastic strapped to your noggin like a damned idiot. Yeah. And even as someone that doesn't get motion sickness, that's not the queasiness I have. Mm -hmm. That's not my particular brand of nausea. Um, 
After too much time playing VR, I will get nauseated. I do not get nauseated going through a haunted house. No. But, okay, so fully 360 degrees. It's fully interactive. Mm -hmm. Your decisions matter, even if it's as simple as where you look and how fast you go through the haunt. It can impact all of your senses, yes, including taste. Mm -hmm. You can actually impact all the senses. And basically, it's like the perfect medium for immersion. Mm -hmm. But... There's a problem that comes with that. The higher of the level of immersion you're striving for, the higher level of immersion you're you're achieving, the easier it is to break it. Yeah. And the harder it is to get back. Right. Because, yeah, like, a, a good example is when you're inside a haunted house, and we're going to go over nine very good examples here, anything that breaks your immersion, anything that takes you out of that moment, you have to put the work to get all those senses re-engaged, get every, all that engagement back. Yeah. Has to come back. And both the haunt and the customer has to do the work to get that engagement back. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, any haunt that's of a reasonable size is going to have, you're going to lose immersion among its customers semi-regularly. Right. It's impossible to maintain that level of immersion for a very long period of time. Mm -hmm. It's just... Too much. Yeah, and there are times when it is absolutely appropriate to break immersion, like for medical emergencies yes. or, uh, you know, somebody's being a drunk asshole yeah. and you've got to get them out quickly. Yeah. There are situations where you want to break immersion and there are times where you may want or need to break it and or just to give the customer a break. Mm -hmm. I mean, because like I said, this requires a lot of energy on the customer, mental energy on the customer's part and the haunt's part. Mm -hmm. So breaks may actually help. But then there are the times haunts do it without meaning to. Yeah. And that is what this episode is about. Nine ways haunts break, or in one case, at least, never obtain a mer immersion. <laughs> yeah. Um, because of stupid shit, basically. Yeah. Bad um, planning. <laughs> yeah, bad planning or bad execution or yeah. whatever. So, we're going to get into it. And the first one is the best way to never get that immersion, I find. Yeah. Which is just simply to have a bad queue line slash bad front of house experience. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, I don't know if I'm the same as everyone else, but personally, the most excited I'm going to be for a haunted house is when we leave our front door. Yeah. Especially if it's like... Early in the season, yeah. or if it's to a brand new haunt, yeah, like that's the most excited I'm gonna be about your haunt. As we're leaving that front door, we're going on an adventure. It's coming up Millhouse and yeah. other references. Yeah, you know we're <laughs> excited. But every minute that's spent driving, every minute that's spent getting the ticket, every minute that's spent getting in line, that excitement is usually dying with, without mm -hmm. something to keep it up. Yeah, it is dying. And what, unfortunately, I mean, you can't control how far people come to see your haunt. No. So you can't control aspects of this. But once they're on your property, once they're in your sphere of influence, sphere of control, mm -hmm. it is your responsibility to try and either make that excitement drop off as slowly as possible mm -hmm. or to keep it up and raise it. And that is where a lot of haunts seem to falter. So, yeah, a long, boring queue line. Mm-hmm. That just puts me in the wrong headspace. Yeah. Because, yeah, okay, I'm getting ready to go into this haunted house. I was really excited to go into haunted house when I left my front door. Mm -hmm. I was really excited when I got in the car. But then I got here, and then I got in this one hour of chat up my neighbors, chat up Crystal, and play on my phone time. Yeah. That just sucked me completely out of that excitement. And that excitement is the energy that the customer brings to allow themselves to be immersed. Yeah. Because one of the things you're going to hear over and over and over again is being immersed is not something that just happens to the customer. The customer has to meet the haunt halfway. Yeah. They have to want it. They have to <laughs> want it, and they have to be willing to put the energy and the effort into it. And if I've spent the past hour screwing around on my phone and making small talk with my neighbors in line, mm -hmm. I'm dead cold. <laughs> yeah. I've got to get that back somehow, and that's going to have to be the first few rooms of the haunt doing it. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, it's it's the old, you dug a hole, now we've got to climb out of it problem. Yeah, so that's why one of the uh, 
the strongest room should be the first room. Yeah, absolutely. If you're... <laughs> so that you can get some of that energy back that you may have lost. Yeah, get people excited. Get people wanting to be there. Get, in the very least, even if it's not your strongest room in terms of scare, it should be one of your most entertaining and memorable rooms. Yeah. Give people something to hook on to. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it might not be wise to have it be your scariest room. Because that usually mm-hmm. should be your last anyway. Yeah. Because you want to send them, you want to send them home strong. Yeah. But, because, yeah, most people, and this is something that's been discussed, most people will remember your first room and your last room and one random thing in the middle. Mm-hmm. And if they remember those three things, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. That's actually pretty good. So, yeah. But anyways, yeah. But having a long, boring queue line experience drains that energy and just makes it so much harder to get immersed and to get that level of connection. Yeah, and this is a hard balancing act. Oh, yeah. Because you also don't want a full-blown stage act that takes forever and kills your throughput either. Yeah. So you've got to find that balance of things to do in line to keep people hyped up, whether it's queue line actors or games or whatever. You know, um, I still say that my favorite queue lines, like if you're going to have a traditional queue line, Basement of the Dead in Chicago shows you how to handle that. Yeah. Because their queue line is a fucking party. Yeah. It is. And I would also say, you know, the alternative to that is um, do like Hell's Gate and Statesville when it was open did and have a show that's that pumps everybody up right before you go in the doors. Yeah. Like when you get into that inner sanctum. And they area. managed to work the show in without killing the throughput too, which is one of the amazing things about it. Exactly. They, they, man- they figured out a way to do that. Uh, because we've seen, like, the old House of Shock used to have their mm-hmm. throughput fucking murdered by their stage show. Yeah. It was just taken out back and shot. No matter how great the haunt is, that throughput was going to be terrible because they're only putting in 50% of their actual capacity. Right. <laughs> so Exactly. And then you're in a conga line, and then it's just, it's like, you know, the show, even if you love the show and it's great and it gets you pumped up, then you're just stuck with people and... Yeah, yeah, it it, it, it it dies down very quickly. Yeah, so yeah, but also you could go like the Camp Blood or that place in Houston we went to with the carnival, right? Where you don't have a queue line or not a lengthy one, anyways. That's Instead, my favorite co- type is, of way. Where waiting. you just mill about a, a carnival and they call you when you know you're five minutes to going in. Yeah, and that way you get to keep your own energy up by going and playing carnival games or watching thing or taking part of little attractions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is awesome. I but the so many haunts. It's like, oh, we had people waiting in line an hour and forty five minutes, mm-hmm. and I bet they were fairly fucking pissy when they went in too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would like to actually see. So you know how on um like rides they have the camera spot on the ride that shows the people screaming, and what if you would just put a security camera hooked up to a TV outside? That's in a a blind corner scare. Mm -hmm. So you round a corner and people get scared and then you get the reaction. So you never know where it's coming from because it doesn't show you anything but the people's reaction. Yeah. As they're inside and you're waiting outside and you're like, oh, this is going to be scary. They got really scared. I like that. Yeah. And that's, there's so much more. And, and I, and the thing, I think the gravest sin here, so many aunts put no thought into this at all. Right. Their main thought is how do we cram as many human bodies into this space in a semi-orderly queue line as possible. Yeah. I mean, and, we understand you got to make your money. <laughs> but this is this actually represents the bulk of the time most customers are going to spend on your property. Make mm-hmm. it good. Yeah. Okay, right. number two. Number two. Cliché phrases and bad acting. Oh, man. Oh. So going through a really good haunt and hearing, please get out. Yeah, or, or get out, or what are you doing here, or fresh meat, or boo, um, don't do that. <laughs> like that shows that even if you have the most beautiful haunt and it's laid out perfectly, if you didn't put as much thought into your actor training as you did into your haunt build, I'm not buying it. Yeah, we have been through haunts where it seemed like every other actor. Was yeah. saying, get out, refresh me. Yeah, or help me. Or help me, or some variation. <laughs> and honestly, we have so many episodes with Jake's Palace. Yes. Go check them out. 43, 46, 59, 74. I'm not calling out football plays. I'm calling out episode numbers. Uh, 94. <laughs> just, just That's one of the things he always talks about when he comes on. Yeah. And for damn good reason. Mm-hmm. Um, it's such an important thing. 
you know, if you can't say something original, mm-hmm. don't say anything at all. Just scream. You Because you, what was the rule? Don't say anything that can be spelled. Yeah, don't say anything that can be spelled. And um, you don't have to make it sensical. <clears throat> no. Like, the more... Uh, and that's one of the things you talked about last time with us, was that the more off-the-wall phrases can be... Um, really fun. Yeah, and really effective, too. Yeah. Because people, even if you don't scare them, they're going to go, to fuck? Exactly. <laughs> a little bit of a brain break. That's yeah, fine. That's fine. But basically, there are just so many lines that are cliche, overused, and I hear them and my heart just sinks. Like, when we were at um, Decomposed Haunted House in Homo, mm-hmm. um, then the, we're eight, Brand new haunt. Yeah. All new actors. Yeah. If they had just put on a C minus yeah. level acting performance, I would have been ecstatic. Yeah. But no, these guys were actually putting on A or B tier. These were doing they were doing some good work. And one of the secrets was the owner would sneak in with various groups and mm-hmm. see what the actors were doing when the haunt was actually open and make corrections and adjustments on the fly. Exactly. If he can figure that out on his first season yeah. of being open as a pro on, man, he, he home haunted for a long time. Yeah. But if he can figure it out, so can other haunts. Yeah. There are, you, you can adjust this. You just have to be thinking about this. And the thing is, like, I get it. We're weird. We go to dozens of haunts every mm-hmm. year. So, yeah, maybe your customer isn't as sick of get out or fresh meat as we are. But here's the thing. If that line is said four times in your haunt, mm-hmm. they're going to notice it, and it's going to suck them out of it. Repetition on those types of lines hits fast. Yeah. Like, you might be able to get away with your butcher character saying fresh meat once yeah. in a haunt. <laughs> At least there it makes sense. Yeah, exactly. At least, Jesus Christ, it makes sense. You might be able to get away with it once. But if now you've got you know your mad scientist saying it six mm-hmm. rooms later, you just... Yeah. It's already done. It's already dead. Yeah. Just stop it. Make sure that the lines are original, appropriate for the character, and that the actors are basically doing their job because this is such an easy way to suck. And and to the actors who have been caught doing this, we understand. It is so easy to hear a line and then get it passed through the haunt. Yeah. Well, and like I put, I don't blame the actors in that situation. No. I totally blame the actor manager because the time wasn't put into training the actors for appropriate responses and to avoid doing that exact picking up of other lines. Yeah, exactly. That's a valid point. Which moves us on to our next item. Mm -hmm. Not being able to tell which fucking way to go. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm adding the fucking to show notes on this one because it is appropriate. Mm -hmm. Here, haunt layout is an art. I will totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. But if I have to, you know, take a minute and figure out where I go, or God help us all if I have to ask someone where to go, I'm out. The immersion's broken. Yeah, and we've been in those haunts, and, you know, early on we thought it would be a novel idea to do the fake doors as well. Yeah. And we've seen it in practice, and glad that we never did it. Yeah. Because it just came up being frustrating. Like, if you lose that momentum of the direction of where to go, then you just get frustrated. You don't get scared. You don't feel trapped. You just are like, ugh, what am I supposed to do now? Why and this, and this actually connects out? with a point we have later, yeah. which is one of the keys to immersion in a haunted attraction is the flow of the customer. Mm-hmm. And not knowing where to go breaks that flow. Mm-hmm. And but basically, I get it why this is so difficult. It's because you have to make everything look organic, but it yeah. still has to be patently obvious and natural where to go. Yeah. And that's and like, tough. It that's is. tough. That is tough. It is. And I have found, so we did a lot of experiment with this. We didn't even make it look natural the first nope. few years. We just actively put glow-in-the-dark, bright orange fucking arrows on the ground, and people still didn't know where to go. Yeah, no, no, that did not fucking work at all. No. No, what the worked only, was lighting. <laughs> exactly. The only way I found to direct people where I want them 
is to make one spot brighter and one spot darker. They don't go to the dark spot, they go to the light spot. Here's the thing. Haunted and haunted houses, humans are basically moths. That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> They're going to fly from light to light to light to light. Yes. yes. <laughs> but no, that is how you do it. Now, here's the thing. This is another reason why I think haunters, especially haunt designers, need to play lots of video games. Yeah. Good games and bad games. Because mm -hmm. you need to see what happens when a video game mm -hmm. is easy to navigate, easy to understand, and you know where you're supposed to go, versus Jesus Christ, I'm lost. Yeah. And what causes A versus B? It is such a great thing. We actually had an episode where we talked about it, episode 185. We talked about uh, horror video games for haunters. But yeah, video games are a great place. And also, one thing I would encourage you to do is when you're doing your 3D design of the haunt, mm -hmm. is... You can there oftentimes multiple systems will let you turn it into basically like a first person shooter level. Yeah. And what you can do is you can have other people navigate and see how they do. What's up? Yeah. And also speaking because you brought up video games, mm -hmm. um, James Isaac the Blind Squirrel was late last week answering the question of the week, but said play Blind Legend. Oh yeah. It is a game designed with sound for visually impaired people. And that sounds awesome. <laughs> and I think that haunters could really learn something with their sound design from playing games like that. Unfortunately, I think I probably would not be the best person to play that. <laughs> no, you not have my fucked up hearing, 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 hearing issues. But, um, but seriously, no, that's a cool idea. Yeah. So yeah, layout is an art, but if customers can't tell where to go organically, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, then yeah. Then, because if there's every second I spend trying to figure out where to go is a second I'm not spending being immersed in the haunt and enjoying the moment. Yeah, and I think that what it does is because it turns your brain on. If you have to actively think about mm -hmm. where you're at and where you're trying to get to, then your brain is kicked on and it's not just reacting. Well, yeah, and we talked about how like the immersion requires energy from the customer. Yeah. And so you want to make as much mental energy available for them to allow themselves to get immersed as possible. And when you, like you said, when you force them to think about where to go, um, now they're taking that energy away and pointing it towards something else. Yeah. And that doesn't help. And the thing is, you can still make them feel lost. Yeah. Like when I'm going through Rise, Rise is actually an excellent example of this. Get through the first few scenes. I'm fucking lost. I have no idea where I am. But I do know where I'm supposed to go next. And exactly. then next, and then next, and next, and next. Exactly. I know those steps. I just don't know where I am in the bigger fucking picture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And honestly, I don't know how they fucking tell either. I mean, I know it's bad <laughs> because we've been in the ceiling of Rise. Yeah. And looked down, and I still can't figure the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, even our little tiny haunt, people get that, you know, There's lost more. feeling. Yeah. It's like, how could there possibly be more? Yeah, anyway. I love that. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's always a riot. All right. Moving on. Number four. All right. Actively dangerous situations. Oh, Jesus, Murphy. Don't put me in actual physical danger. I don't like it. So if there are nails, screws, step downs, unsafe sounds, yeah. like if I'm going to get hearing loss at your haunt, I'm, I'm not liking it. I really hate those sparker ones because nobody uses them correctly or safely. Well, and there's the, there's the other thing that's really, really loud. Oh, uh, there's also the air horns and other things. Yeah. Yeah, that people use too close to ears without protection. Yeah. Um, no, if I'm worried about being physically hurt. Because mm -hmm. we often have likened a haunted attraction to a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. The goal is it should feel scary. It should trigger those automatic, automatic defenses we have for fear. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't actually... Be scary. Right. It shouldn't actually be dangerous. And and we as human beings are pretty good at knowing the difference, really. And like you were talking about, this turns your brain on. Exactly. Now you're thinking, man. Now you're consciously focused on not getting hurt. There's yeah. no room in the brain left for the immersion. Yeah. And this is something that is a little leeway is given to with trail haunts. But being on trail haunts that actually pack down the paths... Versus ones that didn't, much better time on the ones that were prepared. Yeah, like Waterloo, great trail preparation. Yeah. 
we had an amazing time, and one of the reasons we had it, and also it was well lit, surprisingly. Yeah. Like, once again, I was lost as fuck. We're in the we're in the middle of the no. woods in southern Illinois. I have no fucking clue where I am. Yeah, but even, but no, I know where to go next. Yeah, no idea how big the place even is. Yeah, we didn't realize we were going for a two-mile hike or whatever no. it was. No, but we knew exactly where to go next, and we yeah. knew we were safe walking there. And that just meant we got to go with the flow, man. We got to get one with the haunt, and it was great. Yeah. Yeah, and then if you go to a different outdoor haunt and they have a lot of snubs and stuff, then I'm looking at the ground and I'm saying, stop, root. Stop, yeah, root. Step down. <laughs> yeah. Slippery bit. Yeah. Dead squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's supposed to be there. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. Sorry. Not a hazard. That's a prop. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, honestly, yeah, safety, we, we tout safety first for obvious reasons. But if you can't be safe because it's the right thing to do, yeah. be safe because it helps immersion. Exactly. Speaking of things, if you can't do it for the right reason, <laughs> you should do it for the wrong. You can do it for the wrong one. Use of offensive characters, language, or scenery. First is once you're exposed to it, you go, oh. Once again, the brain switches on. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Ah, <laughs> oh, crap. You know, it, it it makes things uncomfortable. Even if it's not something that's offensive to me personally, and honestly, to me personally, as a you know, white cisgender heterosexual guy, there's very little that's offensive to me personally. Mm-hmm. Um, but but even if I know it's offensive to people I love or people I know, or even to some nobody I know at all, but know that somebody coming through it mm-hmm. is likely to feel offended by it. Or feel hurt by it actively. It it's like God oh, damn it. Now I'm depressed. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm wondering if I'm coming back to this haunt next year. That's where it takes me. Is out of the moment completely and thinking to next year. And am I coming to your haunt? And what are we going to say about this when we tell our friends? What are we going to say about the podcast if we do the review? Yeah. Jesus Christ, you know. Yeah. Now, why did you have to make it complicated for me? Why'd you have to go and make things complicated? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. But anyways, but here's the thing: <laughs> if you don't want to do it because you know, if you don't want to like not be offensive to avoid har- harming people, here's the other thing: nearly every offensive thing you can do in a haunt is offensive because it is a stereotype, mm-hmm. meaning it's cliche. Yeah. And fake. <laughs> yes. Not imaginative enough. No. Like, you know, and a good example we've seen, unfortunately, way too many times is the voodoo priest character. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's offensive for a lot of different reasons. It's problematic. But it's also so fucking trite. I yeah. saw The Princess and the Frog, too. <laughs> it was a fine movie. <laughs> but, it'll, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. just, it's just one of those things where it's like, my God. You know, if if you can't avoid racist tropes because you, you I'm not scared of being offensive, mm-hmm. then maybe be scared of being trite and boring too. Yeah. Because it is. Mm-hmm. These things became racist stereotypes because they were caricature overused caricatures. Yeah. And emphasis on over fucking used. Yeah. Don't be sexist. Don't have, you know, people coming after and flirting with all of your customers overly. Don't be sexist. Don't be homophobic. Yeah. Don't just, you know. Don't be you, transphobic. If you can't, if you have to hurt people to be scary, you're not scary. <laughs> yeah. And you're also probably not a good person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, actually, no, you're just not a good person. There's yeah. no problem. You can ruin the problem in that sentence. Mm-hmm. No. Come on. We're, we're better than this. If you if you can't you know ditch the offensive stuff because you don't want to be told what to do, yeah, then do it because it's trite and overused and it's all cliched horseshit. Be original. There are so many things that you can scare people with that aren't yeah offensive. Just just, just, just use your imagination. Yeah. We're supposed to be an industry filled with imaginative people, and yet mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. anyway, moving on. Number six. Let's all keep right. going. Out of place sense or overpowering. Oh wow, this one's a surprising big one to me. Yeah. So when done correctly Emphasis scents, on correctly. Scents are amazing. Because oh. if you can smell the cotton candy, like 
half a hallway before you hit the clowns. <laughs> builds and t- builds some builds some anticipation. Anticipation. Yes, uh, thank you for correcting yourself on that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but if you can, if you feel like you're going to pass out because it's overwhelming, or I don't. Or you use the wrong scent in the scene. Yeah. Or, or what can also happen, is, unfortunately, scents are a lot like light leaks, and mm-hmm. that they can bleed over to the wrong scenes. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, a, an example I put in the notes was the cotton candy near the circus scene, probably pretty good. Yeah. If it's bleeding into your butcher scene, that's nah, less good. Yeah. So that's the wrong scent. Basically, though, everyone does this at haunt conventions, because Froggy's Fog is on every single one. Uh-huh. So, Everyone goes there and goes, I want to smell the old man musk or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And the waiter is, oh, God, it's so bad and all that. And mm-hmm. they put the bottle back. And then, But if you actually read the material they give you, you're not supposed to wave the fucking bottle under people's noses. Yeah. You're supposed to use little drops of it to accent a space. Yeah, and don't open that shit. The night of opening. Oh, good God. Because you're going to make people sick. <laughs> yeah. you gotta, yeah. you got to put it out early so that it has time to dissipate, dissipate and, get, in the, get, into and stuff. get into the right level. Yeah. Basically, though, you know, everyone likes to play around with Foggy's Fox because they do great stuff. Yeah. I get it. it. And it is a lot of fun. But don't use it in a haunt in the way that you use it on the straight show floor, please, for the love of God. Because no. you will make people sick. And yeah. it will be too strong. It will be immersion breaking. Because mm-hmm. the way I think of a scent is like a backup singer. Mm-hmm. If you have a band and you have a backup singer and they're doing their job right, they're adding an extra layer to the music, helping do some harmonies, some melodies, mm-hmm. just bringing more out. Mm-hmm. That's what a scent does. Now, some now if the backup singer is singing too loudly, My now God. we're getting pissed and overwhelmed. Or if they're singing the wrong fucking song... <laughs> Then, I don't know, this was the worst band concert I've ever been to. <laughs> yeah. But no, seriously, I mean, just realize that scents can be powerful, but it's so easy to go too far with it. Mm-hmm. And if it's the wrong scent or if it's too much, it will... Because de- if I'm gagging, mm-hmm. if I'm choking, if I'm scared, I might vomit. Mm-hmm. I ain't immersed. No. I'm just trying to keep my my uh, hot dog from earlier down. Yeah. Exactly. So, number seven is no consistency in rooms. This is a hard one to explain. Yeah. But I'm <laughs> going to do my best. Okay. Um, if Basically, I'm a strong believer that there's room in this industry for haunts of every size, every budget, and every t- almost every type. I, I genuinely believe that. But consistency is important. If your facade and your first room look immaculately detailed, have great highlights and lighting and everything, Mm -hmm. and look really well put together, and everything else is black wall mazes. Yeah. Yeah. Immersion gone. Yeah, I'm I'm not giving you a good review. (laughs) But. (laughs) I'm not telling my friends, you got to go check out this amazing place. But if you want to do a haunt that is a budget and looks like a budget haunt, yeah. As long as it's consistent throughout, yeah. it can still be very, very good. And the way and it's kind of like video games. Again, I keep going to video games. No, no. <laughs> but it's a but it's an apt analogy. And the reason is like right now, you go on Steam, you can buy super realistic shooting games. You can buy, you know, Cyberpunk 2077 or the latest Call of Duty or whatever, mm-hmm. and get these super realistic 3D experiences way on your graphics card, you know really hard and basically you get that or you can also get games like Hollow Knight mm-hmm. that's yeah it's got pretty animation it's a pretty game it is but it's not realistic it's very cartoony and you can also find retro games like Super Mario Brothers and things mm-hmm. like that too that 2D pixel art games and they're all good games they do different things with their art style right but they're all good games but could you imagine if you're playing Cyberpunk 2077 and then, apropos of nothing, not even like a joke, like you went to an arcade machine. Yeah, it just switches and becomes Wolfenstein 3D for a level, <laughs> like the old Wolfenstein 3D. It's kids switched. look it up. There's kids, videos online. The, the original Doom, not the modern Doom, the original Doom, 90s Doom. If it yeah. switched to that, apropos of nothing, because like a Doom, the new Doom did actually do that as bonus levels in mm-hmm. the game. But that's one thing. That's That, that, that makes, puts it into part of the story. Yeah, exactly. That's context. That's part of and the that's story. Fun. But if it just randomly switched between the two, 
you'd be sitting there going, what the fuck? Yeah. This is weird. Yeah. I need an explanation for this. You should have watched Wreck-It Ralph with me, because that kind of explains this, too. Because that, um, that basically was a a pixel art character Mm -hmm. going into super modern and being, like, surprised by all the graphics and shit. Yeah. Well, that's just it. So, have an art style. Mm -hmm. And make that art style as detailed, as realistic as you want. Or, as, like I said, as undetailed as you want. You can make either work great as a haunt, but going between them apropos of nothing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, and we have been to some haunts that have a few rooms that are immaculately decorated. Mm -hmm. Like, just beautiful. And then all of this not finished. This middle stuff. It looks unfinished. Yeah. And that's why it takes you out of it. Yeah. Because you know you can do better. It's like, whenever I was little, my parents were like, if you get an A, you'll get blah, 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 blah. And then they were like, okay, now we know you can do well in school. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> you fell for the oldest trick in the book, Crystal. And being, it's like first grade. Yeah, I know. You're like six. So I guess it's kind of the time you do fall for those tricks. But <laughs> Exactly. But yeah, no, having a consistent art style is crucial. And like I said, I think there's room for all budgets, all types, all skill levels in mm-hmm. terms of d- detail and decoration. I've been to some very, very good haunts that did not rely at all mm-hmm. on their, um, on, on their, uh, you know, their walls, on the, the quality of their rooms and their decoration. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. We, like the uh, Boy Scout haunt we went to. Yeah. We worked at that one. Yeah. There was no fucking effort. No. Negative effort into making those rooms look well, good. And some of the most fun we've had are in charity haunts that use creativity, but cause some kind of cheesy looking materials, you know? But it all flows together because it's got that tied together element. Yeah, yeah when there's, there's when there's a jump one direction or another, yeah. that's when the break hits. Exactly. And hey, if you want to be creative, all these rules are rules you can choose to break. Yeah. Well, except the offensive one. Don't do that. Yeah. But you can break them. But you better use it. (laughs) Yeah. Like, if I were to break this rule specifically, I would start out in immaculate rooms Mm -hmm. and then tell a story with the decay of the building as you go through it. I think it'd be fun to have an immaculate haunt, have an immaculate set of rooms, and then make it look like the haunt is over. Because now you're just in the back alley of the haunt or whatever, undecorated part. And that's when the real haunt's beginning. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You could do that. You could do things like that and be fun. But if it keeps, especially if it keeps oscillating back and forth, apropos no, it's just yeah. going to break the immersion completely. Yeah. Which brings us to number eight. Yeah. The flow. <laughs> the <And> flow. That... <laughs> exactly. The flow. So, big part of immersion is flow going through a haunt. Anything that breaks that flow breaks the immersion because it turns people's brains on. And it gets I've got a thing. Oh, God. Now I'm blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. So the most common for us is running into a slower group. Or having a faster group run into us. Exactly. Um, I don't know how, but Hell's Gate has solved that problem well, and beautifully. We, we On the backstage tour, we did see some of it. Yeah. Because they have the ability to insert actors to hold groups mm-hmm. up organically. Right. But even with that, I'm still very impressed. Yeah. Because even with that trick, I'm like, wow. They yeah. did it well. So, yeah. You've got to either find ways to do that or you've got to space the groups out so it doesn't happen. And, hey, I get it. Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking about putting more space between groups. There I went to throw, but <laughs> right yeah. to the floor, right? Yeah. I get it. I'm impossible to please. Mm-hmm. But we're just being honest here. I do think one thing we should do in the Haunted Attraction, and I've been thinking about this a lot, is sort of creating a culture of playing through. Yeah. So instead of telling people, hurry up or get out of here, and that kind of thing, just let the slower people go slow and the fast people who are scared go fast. Yeah, that's what we do. Because I find that, I I was thinking about it, I think we're about 50-50 on crashing into groups and being crashed into. Yeah. Which means we're probably going about the average speed. Yeah. Technically. (laughs) Um, So, but I've noticed when we crash into a group, they Mm -hmm. almost never encourage us or let us go forward. forward forward right um but when someone crashes into us especially if we can tell that they're going to really want to i don't want to be in front of them when they start running so we'll just say why don't you two go ahead we're in this quiet corner 
We're going to sit here, catch our breath, we'll let you go, and then we'll keep moving. Yeah, exactly. And I think that should be uh, something we should instill as culture, because that really does help us when groups crash into us. Yeah. And I think it would help if other groups would allow us to do the same. Um, But there are other things that can break that flow. Right. A big one being a lot of haunts, especially in Houston. This was all over the shop in Houston. Well, and it's it's here, too. Yeah, it's here in a couple. House of Shock, oh, I'm sorry, No One's Nightmare does in one place. Yeah, and that's, you know, you get out of one of the houses, and then you have to wait in another queue line to get into the second attraction that's all one ticket, and it's all part of one thing. But not really. I do not understand the reason for that. No. And if that's how you're trying to control your flow and your throughput, it's so, not So, yeah, the way point. you're controlling the flow is deliberately breaking it. It's yeah. like That's like breaking an art, breaking a bone to reset it type yeah. thing. Yeah, I guess, but Jesus, <laughs> that'd be my last ditch effort. I've got a yeah. hundred things I'd try first, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess if you have to, but man... So, yeah, and it may also be necessary for safety reasons and other things, too. But, yeah, just know that if you're adding that queue line out of nowhere, especially if it's not multi-ticket you know, ticketed attractions, yeah. you're, you're nuking immersion. You, and you're, you're, you're literally, when, that, when they are pulled into that queue line, they've been pulled out of the haunt, placed into a queue line, mm-hmm. and if they're going to get re-immersed, they've got to go through the whole process again. Yeah, and if it's separate attractions with separate lines and you choose when, what line you go into next, and it's not a, you know, controlled, you have to go here next, mm-hmm. um, that's different because I can say, oh, that line's the shortest. I'm going to go over there first, you know? <laughs> yeah, but in these haunts, this is just an internal queue line separating two, I guess you would say, themed areas. Yeah. All right, and our final, yes, final item is overscaring other customers slash actors frustrated. This basically, this is actors being too into scaring, mm-hmm. is what I think the, the overarching thing here is. Yeah, and hey, as an actor, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. There's a reason we build a haunt. We love scaring mm-hmm. people, but overscaring customers hurts everyone. Yeah, the customer once they've had their scare, once they've had their moment continuously hitting them just to get more and more reactions is 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 just not fun. Yeah. You, you've 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 gone too far and it could be considered traumatic to them. Yeah, and you know, we took a group of friends to a haunt and one of our friends, we did not know that they had a phobia, but they had a phobia and the actors found out and played up on it enough where she was in a ball in a corner and we were like telling the actors stop. Yeah. Because they went too far. Yeah, they they really did. The, the, there is a very real risk of actually doing harm to people yeah. when you do this. Um, but the other issue is, if you're working on this customer that's on the floor, mm-hmm. no one else is getting attention or love or scares. Yeah. No you're one... ignoring everyone else going to the haunt. Yeah, and you're going to kill your throughput. You're going to mess up the group behind them. You're not letting that person leave because you literally have them trapped. Um, Flow is totally broken, yeah. yeah. What's what's the outcome here? <laughs> yeah. And it, it's just so frustrating because nobody is wanting here. Get your good scare. If they fall down because you scared them good, that happens. That's mm-hmm. life. But if they're on the floor and they're already in a vulnerable position and they're clearly... You know, yeah. just getting more and more scared. You know, th- th- you have to learn to back off. You have to learn to retreat and give space. Yeah, it's it's like whenever you're learning to fight. If somebody is down on the ground and not defending themselves, don't continue to beat them up. Yeah. And the flip side of this coin, which once again all stems from actors being a little too passionate about scary. Yeah, we understand. Is um, actors getting frustrated with us or customers like us that aren't giving the reactions they want. Yeah. Here's the thing. We've said this a hundred times on the show. Once again, go back to the James episode. He covered it too. <laughs> yeah. Um, episodes. Uh, you can't scare everyone. Right. Nobody. And I mean absolutely nobody bats a thousand. Anyone who says they do are a fucking liar. <laughs> hmm. Nobody bats a thousand. You do the best you can and you focus on being entertaining rather than being scary. Yeah. And I, and when, and I think it was James who actually said that first and it really clicked with me. Uh. It, well, no, one James. Who he, was it? He told it to you. John LaFlamme boy said it first. Yeah, John LaFlamme. Okay, that's that sounds right. Yeah, but that is such a good point. Yeah. 
Focus on being entertaining. Focus on giving your customers a positive experience. You can't scare them, make them laugh. Mm -hmm. Be a part of the story. Be a character. Be something mm -hmm. they interact and have fun with. You can do other things. Yeah. But the worst thing is when everyone goes, boo! And they're like, come out, and we're like, oh, well, we might react a little bit. And we're like, oh, yeah, good timing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, y'all aren't here to have fun. Uh -huh. Stuff like that. Yeah, if they would have said, oh, you aren't scared of anything. I'm going to hang out with you so I don't get scared. Yeah. Okay, and, like, that would be fucking us, genius. Like, walk with us for a few months? Yeah. Yeah, your zone actor do that? Okay, that is fucking great. I love that. <laughs> this is an idea. J uh, Japes, uh, if, you're put, if you're listening, write that one down. I think that one might be good. <laughs> but no, that is such a good idea. But something like that, yeah, I'm going to stick with you guys. Y'all ain't scared of nothing. Mm-hmm. And A, we would laugh. Yeah. 100% chance we would laugh. And B, we'd be set up for the next person to get scared. Exactly. Because now our shields would be down and we'd be immersed still. We would think we made a friend. <laughs> so, God. Yeah. These are just nine examples, though, of how haunts break immersion without intending to. Yeah. Like I said, immersion is a tricky beast. Mm -hmm. But when done right and when firing on all eight cylinders, I yeah. think no, no form of entertainment beats haunted attractions for immersion. Well, on that note, everyone, thank you for spending the past hour with us. It's been truly wonderful talking about this with you. Please do check us out at the places we exist, hauntweekly.com, Haunt Week on Twitter, Haunt Week on Facebook, youtube.com slash hauntweekly, and wherever you get your podcast from, send us an email, let us know, give us likes, subscribes, loves, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> but until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And we will see you all next week for episode 400 which will include, with any luck, a live stream celebration of the 400th episode. Yes. We'll see you all then.